All right, so <clears throat> last time we talked about starting to do some arithmetic with matrices. So in particular, we talked about adding and subtracting and doing what we referred to as scalar multiplication. So let's see if we can do um, this last couple of examples in here, and then we'll talk about uh, matrix multiplication, how to multiply two matrices before getting into undoing multiplication today. And let's talk about doing inverses. So we'll start that today and finish that up on Wednesday. So this uh, part B here asks us to compute E plus 3F. So remember, in order to be able to add or subtract matrices, what has to be true about their sizes? What do they have to, what has to be true about the sizes in order to be able to add or subtract? It has to be the exact same dimension, right? So do E and F have the same dimension in this case? Yeah, they do, right? They're both what? What are the dimensions of E and F? Two by one, right? Remember we do rows by columns. There's two rows and one column in this case. All right. So if we want to do E plus 3F, the E here is the matrix 4, negative 3, and the F is the 9, negative 4. Using our same uh, order of operations stuff that we do for arithmetic, we should do the multiplication before we do the addition here. So I have 3 times this matrix. We can do a scalar times the matrix. How do you do that? What do you do with the scalar? Multiply. Good. I can multiply everything that's inside the matrix by the scalar, right? What's out in front here? Okay, so I take the 3 times the 9 and the 3 times the negative 4. So we get 27 and negative 12. And then finally, to add these two together, how do you add? Yeah, we just add the, the corresponding entries, right? So we'll do the 4 plus the 27 will give us 31. And then negative 3 plus negative 12 will give us the negative 15. Is that okay? Let's look at this last example. And in this last example, they want you to use the A and the B that are given to you above. It says solve that equation for x. Well, if I weren't worried about what A and B were as far as matrices, what would you need to do to this equation to solve for x? What would you need to do? You get, okay, so what would you need to do to get x by itself? You're right. Subtract the A to the other side, and then divide by 2. I'll do that as multiplying by a half that way. All right, that way. So notice in this case, if I solve for x, it's asking me to subtract these two matrices and then do one half times that matrix that we come up with. So looking above again for the matrices, so I don't have to keep scrolling, I'll just use one of the handouts here. Get things to lay flat. The B matrix is four, one, negative two, five, negative one, three, and the A is negative two, one, three, four, zero, one. So again, what do we want to do first to simplify this? Good. Well, apply everything in the B by the 4 that's out in front. We'll get what? 16, 4, negative 8, 20, negative 4, and 12 when we do that. Then next, we'll subtract the two matrices. What do you get when you subtract the matrices in this case? Okay. 
Okay, so I agree with most of those. So 16 minus a minus 2 makes, that makes it, you guys have made it 18, right? Instead of 14. Yeah. And then 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 8 minus 3 is negative 11. And then we do get 16, negative 4, and 11. And then finally, the last thing we need to do is multiply the 1 half through. So we get 9, 3 halves, negative 11 halves, 8, negative 2, and 11 halves. Okay. Uh, it's been over a week since we talked about it, but are we okay with adding, subtracting, stealing, multiplication? Okay. All right. So let's go to the weird one. <laughs> At least in some sense, it's a little bit weird. And we'll talk about multiplying matrices. So when we've done addition and we've done subtraction, <coughs> pardon me. Well, where the meat stick? <laughs> the meat stick right a little more. Uh, when we've done addition and subtraction, we did it co uh, entry wise, right? We need to have matrices that were the same size match up the entries, and then add or subtract the entries depending on which one we're doing. Matrix multiplication does not work in that same way. It's a little bit strange. There's reasons why we do it for application purposes, which we may or may not have time to talk about <laughs> uh, today. Depends on how fast it goes. But <clears throat> generally speaking, when we multiply matrices together, we don't do it I mean, we still have to multiply entries together, but we don't do it matching entries and doing the multiplication. So the first thing we have to have in order for matrix multiplication even to be defined is when we look at the number of columns in the first matrix, this N, it has to match the number of rows in the second matrix. So in this case, this N has to equal P. So writing it out in words, the number of columns of A must equal the number of rows of B. And we're going to do this matching thing as we go along. So we'll, <clears throat> pardon me, we'll talk about that here in a second. If we can multiply A and B together, we'll get a new matrix. And then what is the size? Well, if A is M by N, and B is, I'll write it as N by K. So now the N and the, the N matches in those two things then the product has dimensions that are m by k. So the number of rows in the product matches the number of rows of the first matrix. The number of columns in the product matches the number of columns in the second matrix. Okay. So let's talk about how we actually do this. So uh, rather than going through a long-winded word definition here, let's look at this example that I have below and just show you by example how this works. Okay. So this first one asks us to do B times C. B on the left, C on the right. Okay. Number of columns of B, there's three, right? Number of rows of C, there's also three. So we can multiply these two things together. If those don't match, you can't multiply. Okay. So for example, I would not be able to do B times B. Right? B has three columns, B has two rows. 
All right, so how does this work when we do b times c? Well, I'm going to write them next to each other to start with. So we're going to take each row of the first matrix and basically match it up with each column in the second matrix and do this product and sum idea. So let's talk about how that works. So I like to, personally, my brain likes to visualize it as I take this row and basically turn it 90 degrees so it matches with the column next door. Okay? So we're going to do 4 times 2, 1 times 0, negative 2 times 3. And do that multiplication. So 4, and I'll write it out this way, 4 times 2, 1 times 0, negative 2 times 3, and we're going to add those together. So I took row 1 of the first matrix, column 1 in the second matrix, and put it in the 1-1 one, one spot of the, third, of the new matrix of the product. So we're taking row and matching up with column. This is why we have to have the number of columns of the first match the rows of the second. Right? So we need to make sure each of these entries match up. Going over here next door to row one, column two, I'll take this row and match it up with the second column. So we'll have four times negative one, one times six, negative 2 times 2. It's almost like a distributive property if you think about it, right? I took this row and multiplied each column by it. Right? Row 1, column 1, row 1, column 2. Kind of, kind of reminds you of distri distributive property. At least it reminds me of distributive property. <clears throat> now do the same thing for the second row. What are we going to get when we match up the second row with the, what product and sum are we going to get when we match up the second row with the first column? Hmm? Five times two, good. Good. Oh, it is a negative three. Thank you. Oh, I forgot the negative. <laughs> Thanks. I didn't see the negative to start with. You're right. Those are negatives on there. Good. So again, taking my second row and matching it with the column. Five times two, negative one times zero, three times negative two. What do you get for that last entry then? Notice again, each of these entries come from the, the, the one, like I said before, the one, one entry comes from row one of the first, column one of the second. The one, two entry is row one, column two. Two, one entry is row two, column one, and then row two, column two. Then if we simplify the arithmetic, then we have our final answer here. 8 plus 0 plus 6 is 14. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2. Minus 4 is negative 2. 10 minus 9 is 1. <coughs> uh, negative 11 plus 6 is negative 5. The rest of that is just simplifying the entries there. What questions do you have on that one? Again, notice that we've got a 2 by 3 multiplied by a 3 by 2. So we end up with a 2 by 2, which is like what we said. What happens if we flip it around? If we do the C, times the B. What 
What size of matrix are we going to end up with when we're done? Three by three, right? The first matrix has three rows. The second matrix has three columns. So we'll end up with three by three in that case. Okay. All right, so what's the first entry going to be? Two times four. Okay, so we're going to take this row and match it with that column. So we'll get plus negative one times five. I don't think I left enough myself enough room here. Let's do that. So again, we match row one with column one to get the one one entry. Keep working our way across. What do we get for the next entry? What computations do we have to do for the next entry? Good. I'm trying to grab the same. Oops. I'm trying to move stuff out of my way so I have a little bit more room here. So two times, so again, we're going to take this, this, this first row and multiply it by the second column that way, All right? So we get two times one plus negative one times negative one. What about the last entry there in the first row? What's it going to be? See what I mean by it kind of looks like a distributive property. I'm taking this first row and distributing it to each of the three columns. That's how we're getting the first row here. Does that make sense? What do we get for the next row then? If we go down to the second row. Okay. Good. And the next one will be... Good. Good. Yeah, exactly right. We all see that. So we've done it for the first row, we did it for the second row, and now it's time to do it for the third row. What do we get for the third row? Good. Good. And then we simplify everything. Eight minus five is three. Two plus one is three. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. 0 plus 30 is 30. 0 plus negative 6 is negative 6. And then we get 18. Negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. And 6 plus 6 is 12. That's okay. So <clears throat> notice that we don't get the same answer, right? We did D times C. We got a different answer than we did P, P times D. So you're used to being able to multiply in either order. You can't do that with matrices. The order matters as far as multiplication. So we call that non-commutative for the multiplication. 
it matters the order of operations there, which one you do on the left and which one you do on the right. What about this last one, d squared? What do you think it means to do d squared? What do you think you want to do? You do d times d. Good. That squaring means the same thing as it always does. Your matrix d in this case is two negative four one six. So we'll multiply that by itself. Notice in order to be able to square a matrix, the matrix itself has to be what's referred to as a square matrix. We have to have the same number of rows as columns in order to multiply it to get by itself. Right? Because the number of columns in the first have to match the number of rows in the second. So row and columns better have the same numbers, otherwise we're not going to be able to square the matrix. What do we get in this case? What do we multiply together first? Good. Ne 2 times 2 plus negative 4 times 1. So you'll get 4 minus 4, which gives you 0. What do we multiply together next? Good. 2 times the negative 4, negative 4 times the 6. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 4 times 6 is negative 24, so we get negative 32. What about the next one? Yeah, good. 1 times 2 plus 6 times 1 gives us 8. And finally, the last one, 1 times negative 4 plus 6 times 6, negative 4 plus 36 will give you 32. Is that okay? Is it making sense how we're doing it? <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, let's do... Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Let's look at um, the next example, just a couple of them, and I'll leave the rest of them for practice here. So um, notice that they should say, I apparently forgot to add an enter when I was uh, typing this up. Notice the first one really wants us to do A plus B. It's just stuck on the end. Apparently, I forgot to hit the enter key when I was putting that in there. Um, can we do A plus B? What has to be true about A and B if you're going to add them? Yeah, everything has to be, they have to have the same dimensions, right? Rows first, rows second, match, column first, column second, right? So your A plus B would be undefined. Good. All right, so this one is undefined. A is 3 by 2, where as B is 2 by 3. Good. Could you multiply A and B together? Yes. A has two columns. B has two rows. You would be able to multiply A times B. If you multiply A and B together, what size matrix would you get? So these two in the middle match, right? So that tells us that we can actually do the multiplication. So what tells you about the size? Yeah, it's three by three. It's the other two numbers, right? Good. Yep. So rows are the first, columns are the second, give you the size of the uh, answer. So A times B would be a three by three. What if you did B times A instead? A, can you do B times B times A? Can you do the operation in the other order? Yep, good. What would the size of B times A be? 
We had two by two, good. Because it would be those, the rows of B is two and the columns of A is two, okay? So without going through the multiplications, your AB is a three by three, your BA is a two by two. Does that make sense? Without actually doing the multiplications. You okay with that? Um, let's see if we can do, <clears throat> pardon me, let's do part B. Do that one as a practice here. So part B says do CB plus D. So your C is 4, negative 4, 8, 1, 2, 2. Your B is 0, negative 5, 1, 4, 1, 6. And your D is 6, 3, 2, negative 2, 1, 1, 1, 0, negative 1. <coughs> Pardon me. Yeah. What would the form be? You mean the size or? Uh, so what do you think it is? So the two is the matching of the columns here and the rows here, right? It'd be a three by three, good. So, so the size of this one's gonna be three here and three there. Yep, that's right. Which is good if I'm gonna be able to add them, right? Because I've gotta be able to have the same size when I'm done. All right, so what do you get when you multiply those first two matrices together? Okay. Good. Yeah, so 4 times 0 plus 1 times 4, right? So we'll get a 4. What's the next one going to be? Good. 4 times negative 5 plus 1 times 1, so we'll get negative 19. The next one's going to be? Good. 4 times 1, 1 plus times 6, so we'll get 10. Everybody see where those numbers are coming from without me writing out all the arithmetic? I can write out the arithmetic if you want me to, but there's no more room. <laughs> all right, what's the next one going to be? Good. Negative 4 times 0 plus the 2 times the 4. The next one will be... <clears throat> I think it's positive. Yeah. Good. 22. So negative 4 times negative 5 gives you 20 plus 2 times 1. So 20 plus 2 gives you 22. <clears throat> the last one in that row. Yeah, good. So negative 4 times the 1. And then 2 times the 6. So you get negative 4 plus 12 gives you 8. And then finally, the last row. Good. Yeah, 8 times 0 plus 2 times 4. So you get 8. Good. The next one. Good, negative 38. So 8 times the negative 5 is negative 40 plus 2. So you get negative 38. And then finally, good. Yes? The bottom right should be a negative 2 in this case. Oh, should it be a negative 2? Well, you are right. I'm looking at the wrong one. Yep. I guess I had a typo there. <laughs> we can fix it one way or the other. So negative here. Yeah, so that changes um, that row. So we get negative 8 instead and negative 42 and negative 4. Thanks. 
<clears throat> it's easy to make a little arithmetic errors here and there. Uh, finally, now if we want to add these together, how do we add these two matrices together? Just go across, good. So the 4 plus the 6 gives us 10. Negative 19 plus the 3 is negative 16. 10 plus the 2 is 12. It's 6, 23, and 9, negative 7, negative 42, and negative 5. And for the last ones. Questions on that one? Is okay? All right. All right, so I'll leave the other ones for practice for the next couple of pages. And I'll give you, I'll put some answers up on uh, Moodle as well so you can see some answers. So let's talk about, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, how we can write a system of equations as a matrix equation. Maybe, there we go. So we've talked about systems of equations, so what we're doing here is just connecting the two ideas. All right, so the idea here is to mainly have our x is going to be the variables that we want to try to solve for here, okay? So our matrix, our matrix that's going to represent X here, we're going to write it as a column of variables. In this case, I've got two variables. I've got X and Y. Why are you leaving the plane today? I've got two variables, X and Y here. So I'm going to write that as a single column. If I'm going to make this a two by one matrix, this is what that is, right? Two rows and one column. If I want to put a matrix here on this side to multiply it, how many columns is that matrix on the left going to have to need to make the, make the multiplication work? This one has two rows in it, so how many columns is this one on this side going to have to have? Two columns, right? Okay. The answer on the end is also going to have one column. So our matrix on the right-hand side over here is probably going to be this 6 and this negative 2 here. On the left-hand side, we want the coefficients to match up. So again, remember how we multiply. We take the row and match it with the column, right? Well, notice in our first equation, what do we have? I've got a negative 1 times the x and a 3 times the y. So what do you think we want in that first row so that when I match it with the x and y, we get negative 1x and a 3y? What do you think we should write across for that first row? Negative 1 and 3, good. What do you think we should write in the second row? To make 5 and negative 14. Good. Notice that this works when we multiply it out, right? Negative 1 times the x plus 3 times the y is the left hand side. That'll be that entry at the top, and it better be equal to the 6. And then the same thing works in the second row as well. So this is taking a system and writing it as a matrix equation. So what do you think the next one's going to look like? Where is that going to go? Oh, yeah, to the right-hand side? Good. So that'll be a column on this side. Okay. Four, 
Okay. Okay. And that's going to be your A and A matrix. I agree with that. Good. So again, your variables are always going to be in that one column right next to the line on the left hand side, that easy side, if you will. And your constants on the right hand side of your equations are going to be on the right hand side of the equal sign. Your coefficients for your variables are going to go in that matrix. And we actually refer to that as a coefficient matrix in this case. To make the product work out. What about this last one then? What will we have here? What's the coefficient matrix going to be? So the co I'll get to the x in a second. The, the A of matrix, sorry. The, co the, the, co the one with the coefficients in it. Good. Yep. Good. Good. Yep. So our coefficient matrix are literally is just literally the coefficients on the variables that we're trying to solve for. So notice that the x two is missing in that first equation, so we'll want to fill it with a zero. That's exactly right. The x matrix in this case is just like the previous one. We'll use x one, x two, x three. And what about your b matrix? Got two negative one one. This okay? All right. Let's do this last little. We're going to come back to this matrix equation idea, by the way, in the next section. But let's just do this last little application before we go into uh, some new stuff. This is actually number 58 in your book. It talks about uh, a company that produces tomato sauce and tomato paste. They have four different sizes of cans, and then there's, and they can make those four sizes with sauce cans or those four sizes with paste cans. And then it asks us to calculate the product of the A matrix and the B matrix and interpret the entry. So the A matrix here is a row matrix that tells you how many ounces are in each of the cans. So a small can has six ounces, a medium can has 10 ounces, and so on down the line. In the B matrix, they're telling you in a particular day how many cans of each type of sauce they make, or sorry, how many cans of each size they make for sauce and for paste. Okay. So it's asking us to calculate the matrix, the product, and then interpret what's going on with the product. All right, so first, let's just write out what the product will be. Oops. If I could write today, that would be very helpful. First, let me ask you, before we try to do any type of computations or any type of interpretations, what size of matrix are we going to end up with when we're done? One by two, good. Exactly right. So notice the first matrix is a one by four. The second matrix is a four by two. So the columns of the first match the rows of the second. The answer has one row because there's one row in the first matrix. That's two columns, or yeah, two columns because there's two columns in the second matrix. Good. So it's going to be a one by two when we're done. Okay. All right, so let's figure out what those numbers are. What calculations do we have to do in order to figure out the product? How would we figure out what the first entry is? 
Good. Exactly right. So six times the two thousand, ten times the three thousand, fourteen times the twenty five hundred, twenty eight times a thousand, and then add them all up together. What do we get when we get do that? What the calculator is for, right? Eight thousand. All right. Nope. Nope. Not right. Let's see. I get twelve and thirty is forty-two plus another twenty-eight is seventy. Uh, plus twenty-five times fourteen. Two fifty and three fifty. A hundred five thousand. Okay. Okay. That's the first one. Okay. What did you get for the second one? Fifty-eight thousand. That's what I got in my head. So <laughs> I'll go. I'll agree with it. Okay. So we're gonna see what how we're getting the answers. Maybe the calculator to help you get the answers. We're understanding how we're matching things up. That's the big thing. The notice that asks us to interpret. So let's think about what we did. If we just do just think about one entry or even just a piece of an entry to start with. If I take this six times this 2,000, what's that going to represent? If I just take the 6 times the 2,000, what does that represent? Where does the 6 come from? Um, the answers in the ounce of the small can, the 2,000 comes from? Yeah, you know, how many small cans? So if I do the 6 times the 2,000, what do I get it? Um, yeah, how many ounces in total just from the small cans, right? So each of those numbers, 10 times 3,000 will be how many ounces come from the medium cans. 14 times the 2,500 is how many from the large cans, and so on down the line. What do you do with each of those numbers? Add it. So what's this 105,000 represent then? The, is it cans? It's the ounces of sauce, right? Total ounces of sauce in a day, right? So then the other number is total, total allowances of paste, right? So the company produces 105,000 ounces of sauce and 58,000 ounces of paste each day. That would be the interpretation in this case for that one. Any questions on that at all? Are we okay with the computations? For when you can do the computations and when you can't? All right. So let's go into the next section briefly because we've got about five minutes. We're going to start talking about inverses of matrices. And basically for inverses of matrices, what we're talking about is the idea of being able to undo matrix multiplication. So that's the idea of 
inverses. So in order to be able to talk about undoing multiplication, we have to talk about where we need to get back to when we undo. All right, so the idea of where to get back to is the idea of the... Why are you being a jerk? What are you doing? Trying to switch. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so the idea of being able to do an inverse is the idea of being able to undo multiplication. Where are you trying to get back to? So think about if you're trying to solve the equation, say, 3x equals 9, and you want to get x by itself, what do you need to do? Divide by the 3, right? Or another way to think about it is multiply by a third, right? Division is multiplying by the reciprocal idea, right? Or multiplying by the, uh, multiplying by the inverse of three, if you will. Okay. The reason why we used one third is because why? What do we want this coefficient to end up being? Why did you just use the divide by three or multiply by a third? What does that when you simplify to that, what do you get? A 1, right? You get a 1 as the coefficient, don't we? And why do we want 1 as the coefficient? What am I doing over here? Nine. Why do we want 1? Yeah, it's just this 1 times the x is just x, right? 1 is the multiplicative identity for real numbers, right? If I take 1 times a number, I just get that number back again, don't I? That's what it needs to be an identity. Okay. We have a similar idea for a matrix, the identity for a, a matrix multiplication, but we don't just have a single identity, we have multiple of them depending on what the dimensions are. Okay. So when we write I sub n, we're referring to it as a multiplicative identity for a matrix depending on the size. So identity matrices are always square matrices. So it'll have the same number of rows as columns. So we'll have the n by n matrix where, uh, I shouldn't say where, I'll say with, with ones down the diagonal. and zeros everywhere else. Okay, so for example, if I said I2, what size would that have? It has to be a square matrix. It's I2. What size would it be? What's the dimensions? 2 by 2. Good. It'd be a 2 by 2 matrix. We have 1s down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So I2 would look like that. If I said I3, it'd be a 3 by 3. Good. And so then we'll have 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So 1 is going down the diagonal. Just like what we do when we find those uh, leading 1s and entries when we're putting something in reduced row echelon form. Right? So that's what we're looking like the diagonal piece. So we can do this for any size we want. And we can check that this really is, it does what we want it to do. So for example, if I take 1, 0, 0, 1 and multiply it by any A, B, C, D that I wanted, for example, when we multiply, what do we get? Well, I'll do 1 times the A and 0 times the C. All we get back is A. If I do the next one over, I'll do 1 times the B, 0 times the D, I'll get B. And then notice that the other row, 
matches up in the same spots. And isn't that what we want an identity to do? When we multiply it by a matrix, it leaves the matrix alone? That's the idea. All right. So well, now that we've got the identity defined, why is that flickering so bad today? When we got the identity defined, we can talk about undoing matrix multiplication, and so that's where the inverses are going to come in. So we'll talk about how we calculate those next time. Have a good one. We will see you on Wednesday.